My name is Harold Coble. I'm a professor emeritus from North Carolina State University, where I retired in 2000. BASF announced uh, their Living Acres program today and focusing a lot on the monarch butterfly. Talk to me a little bit about some of your research and why this is so important. Okay, my research with related to monarch started in 1968 when I was doing my graduate program at the University of Illinois and my major professor told me I needed to work on milkweed because growers were having trouble controlling it so I started working on milkweed at that time. Uh, back then monarch populations were pretty high and we didn't think very much about it but in the last 10 or 15 years we've done a much better job at controlling milkweeds in our crops. Uh, numbers of milkweeds have gone down and there's been a reduction in the number of monarch butterflies and so monarchs are an iconic species you know kind of like bluebirds or bald eagles or things like that and so everybody loves monarchs and so it makes sense that we would increase the populations of monarch butterflies uh, for the public enjoyment. And you mentioned today and, and you mentioned now um, working on milkweed and, and we've taken it out of the, the crop in and as, as a weed, but now we're talking about putting it back in. Talk to me a little bit about that and, and the goal with, with the milkweed program. Yeah, that's a question we get from growers all the time when we start talking about planting the weed on their farm. You know, they spent decades trying to get rid of, of milkweeds out of their crops. But what we're talking about is not planting milkweeds in their croplands, but planting milkweeds in areas of the farm where they don't grow crops. It could be areas around a, a farmstead, it could be areas around a, a barn or a a grain bin, it could be a corner of a field that might be a little wet that they don't use, it could be a grass waterway, a CRP lands, those kinds of things are perfect for, for milkweeds. Uh, we can keep milkweeds out of croplands, you know, it's not a problem anymore. We've got good control practices. So uh, growers haven't really thought very much about this because they've been trying to get rid of milkweeds for decades and now we come in and say, well, we need to grow milkweeds. And now, wait a minute, you know, I spent a lot of time trying to get rid of these. But once you talk about it, once you talk about the, the public benefit of saving this iconic species, then they get the picture. And so it, it's kind of a public service for them uh, to do something to benefit this species and uh, most everybody I've talked to once they know the true story uh, of what's going on have bought into it. How much um, how much land how, how much are you looking for for growers to to give up uh, to, to help save the monarch? You really don't have to give up very much you know a quarter of an acre a half acre it makes a really good population of milkweeds because a monarch butterfly will hone in on an individual milkweed plant. So every plant out there is beneficial. Uh, of course, the more acres, the better, but if a grower has a quarter acre or a half acre somewhere that he could start uh, 30, 40, 50 plants in, that's a really good approach to it. That's the way I would do it if I was a grower. So if a grower is interested in helping to rebuild uh, the monarch population, uh, what's the best way for them to get started in planting this little uh, section of their land to some milkweed? Right. There's two ways to do that. Milkweeds are perennial plants. They reproduce by seeds and by root sections. So if you want to go with seeds, uh, there's plenty of places to buy seed, but you have to treat those seeds in cold, wet conditions for about three or four months in order for them to germinate. And you can't just throw seeds out in the wild and expect to be successful. You've got to start those seedlings inside, let them grow up to about four or six inches tall, and then take them out to plant. That's the only way you'd be successful. Just throwing seeds out, it won't happen. The other, the other way to do it is to find a, a population of milkweed somewhere and go out and actually dig up some of the root sections, plant a section about four to six inches long, and the plants will come right up. So really it's easy for them and, and uh, a long and big term benefit in the long run. Absolutely. It's tremendous benefit for the monarch population and it's pretty easy for the grower. You know, it takes a little bit of time but not very much and not very much cost. We aren't asking growers to spend a lot of money or a lot of time. We know they're strapped for time and money with the economy like it is now. So, uh, you know, it's something they can do relatively easily. So interesting. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. From Commodity Classic in New Orleans, I'm Megan Grebner on Brownfield.